Okay. David this got here. I'm talking to Mary. We had a little technical problem. Mary, are you there? Yes. Okay. Um, what is the problem? Uh, it's hard to explain. When I'm by myself, it's like I act out characters. I pretend I'm different people. It's been going on since I was a kid, and it just makes me feel like I'm crazy, and I feel like I'm split and not one person. Give me an idea of the characters you act out. Oh, God, that's hard. No, just tonight. Give me an idea of what you did tonight. Uh, tonight I've been on the phone waiting for you to call. All right, but before that, the last I was over at some friend's house for dinner. No, the last time you, you acted out as a character. Uh, I'd watch a TV show and act out the TV show, but the top show or, you know, something I made up myself. And I mean, it just varies. There's not one thing. Um, do you ever act out the character of people you know? No. It's only something you see on television? Or stuff I make up myself. Okay, what sort of stuff do you make up? Oh, I might make up something where I'm on a boat and the boat capsizes and, you know, I'm going for survival or I'm kidnapped or... Like I say, I play the different roles. Okay, I'm going to take a leap. You ready? Yeah. Mary. What? You lonely? Not like I used to be, no. I mean, were you really lonely as a child? Uh, yes. I was told by a therapist that was, and I was also sexually molested as a child. Wait, wait, wait. Before you get to sexually molested, lonely, what did the therapist say about loneliness? When I was a kid, I was very isolated and distant from my family. I just felt totally alone. And you made up characters to keep yourself company? Probably to company and keep from the hurt and pain. The hurt and pain of the molestation? That too. Who molested you? A family member. Who? My brother. Uh, over what period of time? What age? I was about six. It only happened a couple of times. Did you tell anyone? No. Why? Why'd you keep it in? Oh, I don't know. Fear of getting in trouble, maybe. Uh-huh. Why would you feel getting in trouble? Because I always seem to get yelled at for things. Okay, so you weren't close to your parents. No. And you found them forbidding. That's what the forbidding is. Yeah. You can't get close because if you get close, you're going to get hurt. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's take a look at that for a minute. So, when did you start going into these fantasies? Probably when I was about six or seven. Okay. Um... Have you ever married? No. Have you ever dated? Yes. Anything serious? A uh, few relationships. Um, what was therapy like? What did you get out of it? Well, from my understanding, I was told it was like a defense mechanism, a source of survival, which I can accept, but it's like, why is it still going on? Why can't I pull away from it? But well, you need something to pull towards. What do you do for a living? Pardon me? What do you do for a living? I deliver mail. You work for the post office? Yes. Um, do you have any social activities? Uh, yes. Like what? I know you're over someone's house tonight. Pardon me? You're over a friend's house tonight, but what sort of things do you do? Uh, I enjoy visiting friends, reading. I'm getting into becoming a big sister. Yeah. You know, I think one of the things that's happening in your life is that you are getting over all of this, but somehow or other why you have defended against life so well and isolated yourself so well you haven't provided an escape hatch for you in other words you don't have anything to substitute for this uh, set of fantasies that you create you're not crazy can we start with that one okay okay but you you need to give something to the world you need to make emotional contact with people being a big sister is a good idea. Getting involved in something like the environment or helping out or doing some volunteer work or making contact with other people, having, having something that you can do for other people that helps them would do wonders for you because it would empower you. All of the fantasies you have had in your life, it sounds to me that of a victim trying to be rescued. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The shipwreck, the kidnapping, all that. So what I think that would really change your life around is to put yourself in a position of power by giving to people who need you 
and who could be benefited by the love and affection that you have to give. Because it's in giving that we find ourselves, not in the taking. The giving makes it possible for us to grow. The taking only makes us more needy. Arlene. It's quite perceptive that you knew that immediately, that she was lonely as a child. Well, what else would you do to fill in fantasies? We use our mind to fill the empty spaces of our life. And I think when we do that to the extent that um, this woman does, and adolescents do this tremendously, you can, you can believe that you're crazy and never share that, never have a close friend. And that's the saddest thing of all, to believe that you're different when really you're just a person reaching out. Thank you for your help tonight. Oh, you're welcome. Interesting show. Interesting show? Oh, I don't know. What's life about? Is it a show? Is this real? It is real. And your life is the realest life of all, because it's the only one you're fully in touch with. If you know yourself and know your life, you can begin to share yourself with others. And my job is to help you understand that a little better. Take care of yourself. See you next week.